let's talk about what I read in October. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna be my October wrap up. October was a very good, very spooky reading month for me and I read a total of 12 books. So without further ado, let's just get into what I read. First up, we have Horrid by Katrina Leno and I listened to this on audiobook. And what was really special about this one is that this was my first audiobook in like forever. And I just haven't been reading audiobooks at all. And I'm like, I have this long drive to work. What if I just listen to audiobooks sometimes instead of listening to music? And it was so much fun. I downloaded this one because it just seemed really cool and like the perfect way to kick off spooky month. And it was honestly so chilling and creepy to listen to this in the car. So we have Jane North Robinson, whose father has recently passed away and her and her mother move to her mother's childhood home in this small town in Maine, which is the North Mansion. However, when they get there, there are things in the mansion that start to warp their minds. Jane is really trying to just like fit in at school even though she's dealing with a bully and her mother seems to kind of downward spiral more and more time that she spends in her childhood house. Something had obviously happened to her there but she will not speak about it. And then we have this room in the house, a storage room that Jane's mother swears must stay closed. However, it turns out that this room is actually a little girl's bedroom remaining untouched for years. Jane slowly is losing herself to the madness of the house as well as lashing out in anger at her peers. Is it grief or is it something more horrid? So I ended up giving this one five stars. I thought it was a really good exploration of grief and anger and the way that things can twist our minds and clearly this was a paranormal thriller so it had more than just psychological things going on but there was a lot of psychological suspense as well i thought it was very interesting the main character jane we learn in the first chapter that she eats books and that's just something that she's always done and that like plays a bigger role later on in like a surprising way and so it's like the the description of her like eating the books is very interesting and it draws you in but we definitely have like two women that are dealing with their grief together in this like strange setting that's totally different from where they came from and it was just creepy it kept me on the edge of my seat and i just like couldn't believe the directions that it went in and i just thought it was such a fantastic read and definitely a really good book to listen to on audio next i read a throne of feathers and bone by shannon mayer and kelly st Clair. this is a self-published fantasy romance series that i've been reading i started the first one a court of honey and ice in september in my romanticiathon event readathon that i hosted and so when the sequel was published i'm like you know what i just want to read it right away well the first one is fresh and so in this series we are following calic ali calic is her full name ali is her nickname um and she is a half human half fae and so she has to undergo these trials to prove that she's worthy of joining up with the fae who all live on this island off of alaska and the human world they have a connection to the underhill which is where they draw their power from however when ali is being ordained into the fae when she's like getting taking her vows to the fae lands the underhill shatters and so now fae are going mad with out this connection to their homeland and Allie has to figure out what exactly happened and to prove that she's not the one that is responsible for this shattering and i really enjoyed this one i thought it was like a very good classic face story with a good romance this second installment in the series really up the ante in terms of the adventure and widened the scope of what is happening and it's a really good setup for the third and final book in the trilogy and i'm really interested to see where it's gonna go i think the magic system is really cool in ways that the sealy and the unsealy like their magics are opposite of one another so like while the sealy brings life the unsealy bring death and because of that like the sealy and the unsealy like can't actually like be together romantically because they would kill each other with their like power battle um and so that definitely plays into the romance and it's like childhood uh friends to enemies to lovers and it's just like a really good time very solid fey adventure story i give it four stars Next, I read Tokyo Ghoul Volume 1 by Sui Ishida, um, and I have a physical copy. I just literally don't know where it is right now because my books are a gigantic mess. <laughs> so in this book, we follow Ken, and 
there are these ghouls that literally like eat human remains and so they're like wreaking havoc on this city and however one day he is attacked by a ghoul and survives and now he is a human turned ghoul and he has to learn to like assimilate with the ghouls and stuff like that this manga series is only like 12 or 13 volumes long so i'm really excited to like dig into it and read the whole thing because it's like a very beloved series and i gave it five stars because i just thought it was just, like so creepy like a really great art style and a very compelling story Next, I read The Atlas Six by Olive Blake, and this is a book that has been blowing up on TikTok, so much so that Tor has actually acquired this title. At first, it was self-published, and now it's going to be released in March in a hardcover edition with a new cover. So in this book, we follow a magical competition of the six brightest magicians of their generation, and um, in this world, like, magic is very incorporated into the world, and, like, people have, like, jobs with their magic and stuff like that, and you can, like, go and attend a magic school, like, two of our characters attend NYU for magic, um, and you can hone your skills in that way. So, and, like, there's illustrations throughout, which I just thought was a great, so you can get, like, a really good, like, idea of what the characters look like. So the latest round of six are going to the Alexandria Society. This is based off of the Library of Alexandria. The thing is that it like didn't burn down. It, all the records and stuff were kept and put somewhere safe and now the society guards them. And so there are six that go into the round, but only five will make it. So we have Libby Rhodes and Nico de Verona, unwilling halves of an unfathomable whole who have uncanny control over the physical elements. Um, then we have Raina Mori is a naturalist who can intuit the actual language of life. Then we have Parisa Kamali who's a telepath that can traverse the depths of anyone's mind. Kalem Nova is an empath easily mistaken for a manipulative illusionist um, because he can influence the intimate workings of a person's inner self. And then finally there's Tristan Kane who can see through illusions to the new structure of reality and an ability that is so rare that neither him nor his peers have a full grip on it. And so we follow them as they enter into a year of training for initiation and we try and see like which of the five are going to make it through the first round and this is going to be a trilogy. Um, I gave this five stars. It absolutely blew me away. Um, when magic systems are based in like real science as someone that has studied science it's like it can be a very big miss for me if the science that the magic system is based in doesn't line up like logically with real science and this one did a very good job of sounding like very scientifically sound while also like having this magical element i just think it's so like intricate and it's a very big like character study and we are following the six different povs and what was really great about this is like you are in the character's mind and you're seeing how you they see themselves but then you're on a different character's pov and you can see how like that person is viewed by the other characters and so you're constantly shifting your mind about what you think about these characters and what is going to happen and of course like the plot it was just like the perfect dark academia magic book and i'm so glad that i read it in october i just feel like it was the perfect time to read it even though you can read it at any point of the year but it was just amazing it was definitely like very twisty turvy es esoteric like made you think kind of book but i really enjoyed it about this one next i had my reread of kingdom of the wicked by carrie maniscalco and this i reread on audio since i read the first one originally physically so it's kind of nice to like when you want to catch up before the next book to read it on audio i find so this is now one of my all-time favorite series so we have two sisters they are strigae they are witches living in 18th century sicily with their parents running their family's italian restaurant um, however, one day, Amelia finds her twin, Vittoria, brutally murdered. So, devastated, Amelia sets out on a mission for vengeance against her murdered twin. She will do this at any cost, even if it means using forbidden dark magic, and thus enter Wrath, who she accidentally summons, and he is a prince of hell. Wrath claims to be on Amelia's side, but you never know with a prince of hell. Um, obviously, I give this five stars. Like, It is just so good. It deals really well with grief, because obviously, Amelia is grieving the loss of her twin sister which is just like unimaginable to me um and so her actions for vengeance like really make a lot of sense and she's just like such a great character um and oh my god her interactions with Raph like I love Raph I love them their banter is like next level like so good I love the whole um intrigue of like trying to solve the mystery of Victoria's a murder and the things that are revealed like as we go along this book 
but then we get to kingdom of the cursed the second book in the trilogy which is now my favorite book of the year that i've read so far and i don't think anything is going to top it on the next month to be quite frank like this was everything that i wanted like i had butterflies the entire time that i was reading i mean and then for the spicy scenes you know um Karen Mastelko upped the level of the series from YA to new adult in this one and it absolutely works so well because this one really delves a lot into Amelia's character and the scenes the scenes oh my goodness I was clutching my pearls like butterflies everywhere but like beyond just like the spicy stuff like the romantic tension you know all that the character journey that Amelia goes on like she's really trying to like shrug off the stigmas that she has like regarding like sexuality and things like that in the modern world because she, you know now she's in a journey to hell and i loved seeing the world of hell like it was so fun going to hell <laughs> um and seeing like wrath truly in his element but beyond that there's like a mystery that you don't know is a mystery in the beginning and becomes revealed as you go along and like the plot is so much bigger than i thought it was but it was set up really well in the first book that it makes sense but like you're just like all of a sudden these insignificant details from the first book come back and you're like oh my god and that twist at the end i was shaking in my boots like this book just gave me every feeling and like i mean you this is like probably the most i've ever tapped a book like i just have uh, such butterflies i have no words words are not enough like i love this so freaking much Okay, so next up I read The Wicked Villains Shorts by Katie Robert. If you've been around my channel, you know I've been reading Katie Robert for a while and she's one of my favorite romance authors. So this is the follow-up to the Wicked Villains series, which I read over the course of the last year. Loved it. It's dirty, smutty, Disney villains romance books. They're amazing check that out and this is just a bunch of short stories that follow these characters after the ending of their novels and it was just really fun and i love these like short story compilations just to give us a little extra about the characters you know um i didn't give it a rating because i don't normally like rate novellas unless i feel like they deserve a rating if that makes sense but usually i just read them for fun so no rating then next I read The X-Hex by Erin Startling and this story follows Vivi who dates Reese for a summer nine years ago and then they have a falling out at the end of the summer and he goes back to his native um, Wales and Vivi is like really pissed off and so her and her cousin accidentally hex him and the tagline is never mix witchcraft and vodka and so he's back in town nine years later Vivi and her cousin just think that like this hex that they placed on him was a joke nine years ago and didn't actually work however when he's back in town strange things start occurring to him and somehow the cursed magic spreads out to the town so now uh vivi and reese must work together to unhex himself and the town so i gave this one four stars it was just a very cutesy perfect spooky vibes rom-com definitely gives like that small town witchy vibe similar to hocus pocus i just like loved everything to do with the town like i just thought it was like such a cute and cozy read and reese and vivi had a very cute relationship and i loved seeing them give each other a second chance it was just very heartwarming next i read lola and the millionaires part one and part two so that's two books um However, I'm just gonna put them together. So I've seen this one all over TikTok and I'm like, I wanna give it a try. If you don't know, it's an Omegaverse, which is something that actually started in fan fiction. I don't know if I really wanna explain what an Omegaverse is here, but anyways, like <laughs> that's just what it is. So we have Lola who is a beta and after like being sexually assaulted by some alphas, she is scared off of interacting with any kind of alpha like she like physically like has a reaction when she like sees an alpha and in this world like there's a lot of betas and then less of alphas and omegas so the book goes into detail about like what each one is oh i forgot to mention this is by katherine moon who also um wrote the lady of brooks grave manor and i feel like she does reverse harems really well so yes this is a reverse harem book and this is about lola um at first she meets leo and then like as time goes on she gets like integrated into leo's pack 
and it's really a journey about her learning to overcome her sexual trauma and her sexual assault while also like fitting into the lives of these men and what I really loved about this is that even though there are a lot of characters like the relationship between Lola and each of the men in the pact is developed at a different pace and um like there's genuine connections between her and all the characters it's not like she's just like adding people to her harem if you know what i mean so i loved that, that was like a very natural progression and i thought it was like very sweet and obviously this is a trigger warning for sexual assault but i just thought it was like a really great story about like overcoming trauma and something i also appreciated is that like the pack members like the men also had relationships between themselves which i find to be like if there's that many people like being involved with each other like to me it's more realistic that like they're not all just like involved with the one woman like that they would be involved with each other too so i tend to like those kinds of reverse harems more um uh, so yeah if you're looking for like a really solid reverse harem series definitely check this out i gave both books four stars next i read lake's edge by lindell clipstone and this is a new gothic ya fantasy romance and we follow v violetta um would do anything to protect her younger brother and so they end up going to the lake's edge manor with the lord of the manor rowan who was rumored to have drowned his entire family when letta is there she realizes that rowan is actually um bound to the lord under which is the god of death and uh, letta has her own mysterious connections to this lord under and so they come to like an understanding with one another um and they are trying to basically like break the curse so I gave this one a five stars. I just felt like the writing was really gorgeous and beautiful. Like I have a lot of tabs. Um, definitely just like a very gothic setting. Um, if you want like a gothic YA, I think this is perfect for you. Definitely like Letta and Rowan's relationship definitely feels very much like a young love type of situation, but because they are so young, like that's, you know, what I expected out of it. But I just thought that like the setting and the mystery and intrigue revolving around this dark magic and this dark lake were really fun and very spooky and i really enjoyed this and i think it's going to be a duology so i'm very excited for the second one and then the last book that i read in october is ruins of chaos by amelia hudgens so this is part of the flames of chaos series it's the third book i read the first two books and like really enjoyed them and then this third book i stopped at 56 percent for like a so like I think the last time I picked this book up was like January and I'm like, you know what? It's been on my currently reading for a while and I want to finish it. So I'm just going to finish it. Here's the thing. The like smut and the spice in the stuff is like really good. Very like dark and steamy. But like, I just feel like I never know what's going on with the plot. Like the characters are just all over the place. Like you can't follow what's going on. It's very like stream of conscious writing and it feels like it's not edited. And then the first two books, like there was enough like going on that like I could kind of look past that and just like enjoy like the fun romance TV part of it. But like this third book was just like, I was like, what, where are we going with this? Like, I feel like we're supposed to be seeing some character development, like in the forward of the first book. The author was like, you're going to hate Knox, the love interest, and that eventually, like, you're gonna love him. And, like, every time they take a step forward, they take two steps back. And I'm just like, what is going on? Like, it's just all over the place. That being said, I still give it two stars, even though I was very tempted to give it one star because at the end there were some smut scenes that really just made me like, okay, like, I see the point. So at this point, I feel invested enough in the series that I will continue, even though I think that I will, like, rate it low i will still kind of enjoy reading it if that makes sense like i have a love-hate relationship with this series if you've read it like let me know if you like relate to what i'm saying because i don't know it's just confusing so with that that is all the books that i read in october let me know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them down below love to chat with you guys in the comments leave a little ghost emoji if you watched this far and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one